Now, before I get into this, I just want to say to the general public, are y'all really this stupid? <laughs> Alright, well, here we go. For those who are lost in the abyss, let me guide you to the light once again through the lies of the devil. Now, let's talk about this Thomas Hauser situation. First of all, Thomas Hauser is a writer, which means that he particularly is the devil. <laughs> Just kidding. Might be related though. And he's hell bent on hating on Floyd Mayweather. And the real reason why is because he's a big Muhammad Ali fan. This guy wrote 41 books, about 30 is on Muhammad Ali. His times in life. Muhammad Ali. Ricky Hatton. Ricky Hatton is so phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, he's real good at writing books and how to draw you in. And this whole article is all about misdirection and filling up blank space with other stuff that was so unrelatable. It was fiction. <laughs> But he seems to have an agenda towards Floyd Mayweather and Yasada, which means that he works for someone who pays him some money to do whatever. And they normally have an agenda that they follow. And this time, based on the timing of this, the article, it's so inaccurate on what they're trying to do. They're basically saying Floyd Mayweather did nothing wrong, but look at what he did. So anybody with common sense who's reading this article is going to think, oh my God, these are banned. These IV bags are banned. But let me tell you something. What you read, if people didn't read, read anything, but people don't read anything, they just read the tagline and, and that's that. But if you read the article, and my God, I wish I had the majority of that time back. If you read the article, it clearly states that Floyd Mayweather received vitamins, he received 250 milligrams, all the stuff that's in a IV, saline, and all of these things that are vitamins and minerals. Nothing illegal in the bags whatsoever. So he's not taking anything. So all of this comes out to be the actual use of IV bags, right? Well, it was only in July the 1st where everyone was sick. July the 1st of 2015 that USADA is going to put in the, the IV rule. The IV rule by USADA is going to be put in place to protect the sport and IVs can be used to change blood test results. So they want to go ahead and ban the use of IV bags. But in the sport of physical contact, people use it when they have to cut weight to make weight in certain cases. They use IV to replenish, you know, to put the vitamins in their system faster so that they don't have to drink water or eat food. And see, that's why with this type of competition, it's not like cycling or anything else. Whenever there's a competition where you have to make weight, these type of rules kind of hinder the fighter. But on July the 1st, the letter was sent out. The IV rule does not go into effect until October the 1st, 2015. So that is a couple of weeks away before that rule goes into effect. Now, Water Code says that, well, we already don't do the IV bags. So you've got to have the paperwork filled out properly so that you can follow the guidelines. What Floyd Mayweather did exactly. They're saying the use of IV period the IV process could be used to mass drugs 
yes, it can be used to mask drugs. Not that Floyd Mayweather used it to mask drugs. But the article wants to lead you to believe that he did. That's the way the writing is. That's why you see all this 17 paragraphs of unrelated material with Eric Morales, Francois Bolta, everything, anybody else who ever touched a steroid, they gonna throw them in there and put Conte and show you bottles of steroids and then it's misleading you to the point that Floyd did something illegal. So, it's really dumb. It's really... It's, it's total... Old school propaganda writing. Now, let's go through the rest of this, okay? Because I've already talked to you, Sada, and I already tried to cuss out Bob Bennett. But that's another story. Now, after all of this was said and done, okay? Even Wada has it in there, and they're complaining at the fact he got an exemption. Which TUEs has always been there. What is the problem? If you a TUE, which is the therapeutic use for exemption, it has been there for before Floyd Mayweather has ever, ever came into USADA. No, both sides of the camps were notified that Floyd put in his TUE before getting the IV injection. So that's why it's so inaccurate. Now let's go back to this t positive test thing that they talked about. Oh, Mayweather had a positive test back in there and he filed for no dummy. What happened is before these tests that you think he tested positive for no. What he did was take medicine, painkillers which was documented, which was told, which was found. So when they test A and A, it tested positive for this substance and that substance, which was, which was uh, in guidelines to what was on the paperwork for the painkillers during the training camp. So when they took those, there wasn't no need to test sample B because what they found in sample A was already explained and it was approved so these this what I mean by deception the devil is a liar <laughs> that's about is all you need to know <laughs> that is all you need to know but let's move on okay let's go to these the, the lab court where they underline the T, T and E ratio of a 0 0.8 Now, they say 0.4 is considered normal. Okay, that's normal if you're walking around just waking up in the morning. Yeah, 4.0. Or 0.4, rather. Not a 4.0. Jesus Christ. No. That is normal for that. But 0.8, it depends on... Anybody can get an 0.8. You could drink a hell of a lot of caffeine and get an 0.8. Floyd takes in a lot of caffeine. If you test somebody after a training camp, after they just went through a training camp, their testosterone level is going to be high. Probably around 0.6, 0.7. Mine is normally, a, a, what was it, 0.7? What was it, 0.6, 0.7? This is just two years ago, but mine was 0.7. I don't take no steroids unless they put in steroids in a, a Coca-Cola. Probably. I don't know. But mine's 0.7. USADA does see our, our testing for Floyd Mayweather fights. They know that. So if you get a 0.8 or 0.69, which you could get from an energy drink or anything else to get that kind of number... And that was a red flag. And they was like, oh, that's a warning flag. So we, we might need to start doing They did CRR testing. If Floyd Mayweather didn't pass the CRR testing, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And then Nevada State Athletic Committee wants to be in an outrage over this. We didn't know anything or what was going on. Nobody told us nothing. Bob Bennett, really? 
Nobody told you nothing, huh? Well, okay. Let's talk about what the, what they did tell you, which is not in the article. Okay. Uh, another lab that wasn't Yasada. That's why you didn't hear about it because it's not Yasada. We had a TNA TNE ratio of twice a point two nine. Which is a very weird number, right? 0.29? That's pretty high for a TNE ratio. For UFC fighter John Jones, the boy TNE ratio was 0.19. On another one, and this is straight urine. They're not doing blood tests. 0.29. And that was December the 18th. Okay? Now, when that happened, when they did the testing, they got the results. Nevada State Athletic Committee, of course, being the Nevada State Athletic Committee, wouldn't agree to doing the CIR testing, which they have the samples for John Jones stored, and they won't do it. But yet, you can be outraged about an IV where it's being administered. It's not supposed to be administered in the house. It's supposed to be in the, in the gym. It's supposed to be here, man. Who cares where they got the vitamins that going on? I don't care where they put them at. As long as they got the approval, nothing in their system, that's all we care about. Everybody has gotten IVs. Oscar De La Hoya got an IV before he went to fight Pacquiao. Pacquiao got an IV before he fought Bradley. Fighters get IVs all the time. We care about what's in the system. That's it. They took blood and urine tests? Fine. That's all we need to know. All these lies and all this stuff. Y'all eat this stuff up. Believe me. God, just because you see it everywhere doesn't mean it's true. It's all misconception. They twist this stuff just to lead you down a path of, yeah, yeah, he cheated. Y'all don't even know what he's talking about. Three, four, what? The last five people that sent me this link didn't even read it. They didn't even read it. They just shared it. Let's share it with him so he could see it. See, he cheated against Pacquiao. I'm like, really? <laughs> this goes to show you right here how dumb people are. Now, off a urine test, his TE ratio was 0.2. Now, how did that happen? And did they test to see what? Did he do any other drugs like EPO and everything else with his stored sample? No. He came out and said, I took some cocaine. And that was acceptable enough for them to say, John Jones just took some cocaine. So we're going to suspend him for doing cocaine. So. Hey, that's all I can tell you. But if the 0.8 <laughs> is a red flag, how could you not bring up the John Jones incident, Mr. Hauser? Oh, because it's not USADA. I get it. That was actually the Nevada State Athletic Committee. So that actually backfires on you. That actually just throws a monkey wrench in your little story. Because you think it's just your SADA when the Nevada State Athletic Committee, who I guess you're praising, them and Vada, I guess. Let's listen to what Conte has to say, yeah. I mean, he's only going to tell you the basis of the tests, and sure. But. 
USADA does see our testing, especially for their biggest fights ever. They do see our testing. Do you think that they would go into a fight against Manny Pacquiao and there would be no CRR testing? The only question that you fail to even address between Vada and USADA is the fact that Vada wants to use CRR testing through all of its fights. USADA don't seem it deem it necessary to use such an expensive test on some of the smaller fights that's not generating enough money for even the, the fight or the test and as for WADA for those who don't understand that the revisions what they came with the TUEs actually was voted on in Johannesburg in November of 2013 it didn't come into effect to January 2015 and uh, what they talking about is the revision of IVs being used uh, and with them they didn't think boxing or MMA or any type of combat sport when they made this decision because their thing is mostly cycling runners and they don't have to make weight so they want to try to limit their ability to cheat so this is not a, something that had the sport of boxing or MMA involvement in it. But since USADA uses WADA's systems of uh, basically trying to implement the rules of non-cheating, it affects those who are trying to make weight. And that's from everybody. It's not Floyd Mayweather. It's every single body that's in the sport it becomes a situation that they gotta try to work around now they're gonna really have to bring that back to the table come October 1st when they can't use IVs they gotta use another way to put saline in their system to rehydrate their bodies back so this is gonna become more of a situational problem for fighters than it would for anybody else but this was a rule put in by water it didn't have anything to do with Floyd Mayweather or anybody else but, like I told you, the devil is a liar. He's going to make you think all of this was rules for Floyd. Floyd wants to break all the rules. And when all of these things been in place since 2004, TUEs have come into the world anti-doping code or agency, whatever it is, since 2004. Okay, it went into effect in 2005 of January. So since 2005, you could use TUEs. So all the rules were followed. Nothing was illegal. Everything was done legally and properly. There will be no suspensions. There will be no fines. Bob Bennett can pull his hair out and do rolls on the floor and spin around. But he needs to address things that's going on in his own backyard why you not doing CR testing answer that question Bob Bennett then you can come talk to the big boys I'm out